Uh, Dean Evans from Winning Edge Investments joins us now to have a look at the two major races on a Saturday afternoon, both in Melbourne and in Sydney. Good morning to you, Dean. Thanks for your time on Big V Racing. Good morning, guys. Good to be here. How are you going? We're well. We are very well. Uh, I tell you what, it's going to be wet at Caulfield tomorrow. Well, it's going to be a heavy track and uh, it might, may be an improving track up there in Sydney. Uh, how confident are you heading into Caulfield and Randwick tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, look, the track looks like they're, they're both sort of improving a bit, which I think is important. Um, when it sort of rains on the day and close to you, you can get, uh, you know, those real real muddy tracks and, and often it, it, there's a bias towards the horses on the speed. But I think, uh, you know, as long as you get a bit of drying, both Randwick and Caulfield are good drying tracks. And so, you know, hopefully we can get something that's, you know, obviously better than a heavy 10, but, um, uh, you know, just Caulfield can get to a heavy 9 or a heavy 8 and, and Randwick could potentially get to a top 7, then... You know, that's a reasonably fair surface and the surface they're used to racing on. And, and often when there's um, a wet track like that, at least there's a few of the, the dry trackers that you can rule a line through. Dean, how important do you think Barrows to go to be tomorrow at Caulfield? Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how, how the track plays and we'll know a lot more as the, as the day progresses. Um, the Caulfield Cup historically uh, is a race where, you know, on-pace horses um, do do pretty well. Um, and, you know, with a 2,400-metre slog um, on, a, on a heavy track, um, you know, I think it's going to be quite hard for those horses that are wide out the back, and, and there are some sort of horses that have drawn wide um, and are going to, you know, find it tough from where they are to, to run past, um, you know, every runner in the race. And I think a horse like Ben O is an example, drawn 20, is going to drop out the back. Um, you know, it, it's going to make it hard, I think, on a wet track to come from really far back. So I think there are some horses in the Caulfield Cup that will be positioned... Uh, you know, certainly in that front half of the field, and I think that they will have an advantage. With that in mind, are you with the favourite Smoke and Romans tomorrow? Oh, uh, look, you know, it's amazing with Smoke and Romans. 365 days ago, he, he ran second to a hurdler in a midweek BM84, um, and now here he is as a Caulfield Cup favourite. Um, look, he's certainly got the ticks in terms of the trainer jockey, the, the prep and the weight, but he, he's won two races that were sort of walkathons. I think he's going to see more pressure here. Um, and the bog heavy track is uh, it's something I think he hasn't quite seen before either. Um, I'm quite keen in the horse called New Mary, and you know he, he has exceptional form overseas from a couple of years ago. He, he beat the Cox Plate winner Sir Dragon A by nearly three lengths in Ireland on a really heavy track, and he was also beaten ahead by the Cox Plate runner Art Armory on a really heavy track in Ireland. Both times were really big weights. It took him a bit of time to acclimatise here, but last prep he won a, a Group Two level in Brisbane. He beat Maximal, for example, by two and a half lengths. And Maximal then ran second in the Turnbull, beaten 1.4 lengths by the Caulfield Cup favourite a fortnight ago. So, you know, his form line's really tight and well. He did two runs this prep. He ran second both times. First up, he ran really strong, closing sectionals in the challenge. And second up, they went plus 17 uh, lengths, you know, for the first section in the Hill Stakes. Um, and he ran again second. And, you know, Cascadian is going to run the Cox Plate, beat him. But Cascadian sort of sat out the back. Well, New Marion did the tough stuff up front um, in a race where they just ran really quick early. I think that's going to season them really well for this 2,400 metres. His heavy track form overseas is exceptional. I think there's a real push. The, the horse has been set for this race, and Tommy Berry sacrificed a number of rides. You know, he could have ridden in the Everest. Uh, he could have ridden Arcado, who's ridden to win a Cozzy before um, again. And he turned that all down to ride New Marion here. And I think that's a real big pointer. And from the map perspective, um, you know, I think King's Order... Um, nice order, sorry, or lead comfortably. But then you really only got Charlie Rose, Smoke and Romans, and Numerian who map on speed. Um, and so I think Numerian's going to get a beautiful run. He could sit sort of in the 1-1. One, one. Um, and and I, I think he's raised a really strong chance in this race. Cummings and Josh Parr were both quite confident and speaking effusively about Dewey during the week. How do you assess it, Dave? I, I find it hard to have. You know, she, she won the Australian Cup and Tank with last prep. She's just... just Failed four starts in a row, pulled up lane two starts back. He had absolutely every chance in the Turnbull. And I'm not convinced that a really heavy track is, is, a, is any big plus for her. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to come into Jua at all. It would be, take a massive form turnaround for her to, to win. Another one, I think if it gets a run, could be a roughie, Macram down the bottom. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I actually think he's probably the best roughly in the race if he gets the run. You know, he ran second in the Herbert Powell last start. His, his closing sectionals are really, really strong. Um, and, 
you know, that urban power has produced a couple of winners of the race recently, uh, Boom Time and, and Mongolian Khan. So, um, you know, I, I think off a, off a quick backup, um, he would be a good chance. He handles the West and, and he probably is a, a good lightweight chance if he can fluke a run. An hour earlier at, uh, at Ramwick, Dean, Nature Strip shooting for his second Everest in two years. He's drawn the outside barrier number 12. He is the even money favourite. Do you expect him to get the job done tomorrow? Look, he won the TJ Smith in the autumn over this track just in three years in a row. Uh, he won the Everest last year. Um, look, he's, he's the best, West, best sprinter in the world. He's been set for this. The rain affected tracks are positive. The two runs this prep, I think, been better than any preps ahead of the Everest and the TJ Smith last year. So, look, it's very hard to beat. Um, but he, he, he's got a bit of map pressure here. You've got Eduardo and Joyful Fortune, who are both going to kick up inside him. Um, and I like the shades of Rose, Overpass and Marzu. They're also going to want to be pretty handy. If one of them jumps really well, then they'll push forward as well. You know, there's potential that nature's just being slow away from that outside gate. It's going to have to do a bit of work, and, and, and J-Mac's going to have to decide does he actually want to push forward um, on his speed and, and, and go around and try to lead them all, um, or is he actually going to take a sit um, and sit, say, fourth like he did you know, impressively in the shorts to win, but, you know, his previous Everest and TJ Smith wins, he's, he's led or set outside the lead and really sort of controlled the speed and bullied them. So it's going to be really interesting. I sort of rate him a 64 chance, nature's a bit trip, really hard to beat, you know, but he's sort of the horse where he'd be a very big, big, strong, confident bet at $3, but at $2, um, I'm, I'm looking at, at, at potentially being around him, you know, noting he only won the race by, by a neck last year. Lost in running the horse I'm really, really interested in. He, he ran fourth in the race last year, beating two lengths when he was very inexperienced. You know, it's important to note that both Classic Legend and Nature Strip were unplaced in their first Everest before winning it the subsequent year. Um, and last year before the Everest, he ran fourth, beating 1.5 lengths in the Premier Station. And this year, he won it and rated substantially better um, on my numbers. So he's flying, and, and I think, uh, you know, he's the strongest chance to knock over Nature Strip lost in running. Could it set up for something to run home over the top like a Jack Benoit or even ingratiating was a good run the other day at Caulfield? Yeah, look, I, I think it does set up for that potential. And uh, I think the two that are most likely are Jack and o, um, you know, the Golden Rose winner. Yes, 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 came off a close second in the Golden Rose to win this three years ago. Uh, he looks a, a really high-quality horse, Jack and o. It was impressive for him to do that second up off a 28-day break to win the Golden Rose. So I think Jack and o absolutely is a horse with the weight pull. Um, that, that will be breathing down next to Strip's neck and, and flying home uh, late. I think the other one that I'm keen on to as a sleeper is, is Mark Crusader. You know, he ran a very unlucky second to Nature Strip in the TJ Smith and then only was beaten uh, uh, neck in the Everest last year. Um, he didn't come up in the spring, uh, in the autumn, but it's strong finishing close third in the premier. Rated as though he's getting back to his best. I think he'd prefer drier, um, but I, you know, for me, there's, there's four winning chances in the race, um, lost and running Nature Strip. And, and if they go really quick, I think Jack and I will mark if they could blow them. The country tomorrow we should be backing, Dean. Sorry, what was that? A anything else around the country we should have a bet on tomorrow? Um, look, I think in the Silver Eagle, uh, I, I want to be just checking that Randall's playing fair and they can swoop. But if they're swooping, I'm very clean on start. Um who loves a wet track, mm. ran second in the surround at the track and distance. And then one with the Sierra, Sierra last prep. Both her runs as prep, she just had that zero luck, but her sectionals have been absolutely outstanding. Um, so I think Star Ponte is hard to beat. And I think if they're running on, SBO and is the other one in that race. Um, with some strong speed up front from the likes of Mr. Mozart and Lavish Hill. That's the one that I've been seeing on back in both Star Ponte and SBO and the results in the field of Eagles. She's a double figure odds tomorrow, Star Tantes. Uh, good luck tomorrow afternoon, Dean. And uh, if anyone wants to get involved, they can just head to winningedgeinvestments.com and uh, use the RSM promo code. That's right. And they get a 50% ongoing uh, lifetime discount. Love your work. We'll catch up again next week. Cheers, guys. Good luck. Good on you, Dean. Dean Evans.